Yeah. All right. Let's do it. All right. We're going to try. It's a little temperamental. It's okay. Oh, you it's off. That's my bad. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Josh Sorman and today we're going to get to know someone very special to Corning PX campus. We're going to get to know a little bit more about her, about her job while riding around in this golf cart. We're going to go pick her up in a little bit. All right, President Olin, I, uh, I'm here to pick you up. Oh! Are you excited? I'm excited and what a transportation vehicle. I know. And clean too. So a we're going to take vehicle. a quick tour of the campus. Thank you. Thank you. And get you. to know you a little bit more, the Corning PX president. So I guess, you know, the first question would kind of be, why did you agree to do like a non-traditional interview like this? Well, first of all, I love having these invitations, Josh, so thank you. And the sun is shining. There isn't a lick of rain in the forecast. And I'll get to see more parts of the campus and I'll be with students. So all of these things are perfect. And how cool is it like to see the president of a university? I mean, I don't know how many presidents of universities are doing an interview like this, you know, where they're doing like it, and it's so unique. Well, look, you're the essence of the university. I view it as part of my joy. I try to see students every day. After you today, there are two or three students that contacted me who wanted to talk about something, and they're coming in. Students always get to the front of the queue in my office, in my, in my world. So it's um, really a way for me to stay connected to really what universities are about. They're about learning, they're about scholarship, they're about human development, they're about having an impact. And it's through students, faculty, and staff. So how common is that that students will reach out to talk about issues? Um, quite common, actually. And I welcome it. Now, sometimes I'm going to tell students that um, oh, we have to show our, to show our cue, cue card. card here. Good morning, how are here. you? Hi there, how, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Do you have to show your cue card a lot? Well, you know, they've, they've gotten to know me by now, so they wave me through, and I have this blue car that they um, figure out that I drive. So, I, But sometimes I have to show it like everybody else. What is the number one thing that people come to you and, uh, and ask you to, to kind of change or, or help? Well, I hate to admit it, but it's parking. <laughs> and we, we have to do better on that. And we, we are going to bring in some really smart thinking. Because frankly, every city, every public entity, every commercial entity um, has parking issues. And we have to find creative solutions that use analytics, and that's what we're going to do. You mentioned the parking. Can you help me get help me get out of my parking tickets? Um, I can't <laughs> even get out of parking tickets, so you can't yeah. either. Okay, I don't even have any. Good. Four years, Good. no parking tickets. Wow, that's got to be a record. It probably helps. I never had a car on campus. That's, <laughs> probably, that's probably why. I'm okay, right. but, obviously. But we should also have more bikes. Of course. Yeah. So we're going to get out. We'll just take a quick look at the bike. Okay. Cat. Yeah, I like this version of the Bobcat. Yeah. It's different than the one up in, on North, um, on York Hill. It's an interesting Bobcat. I don't know if you heard, but I said in my inauguration that Quinnipiac embodies the spirit of the Bobcat. Fast, nimble, and punches above its <coughs> weight. It's, it's gotten, it exerts more power than its size. And I really think it's a great metaphor for Quinnipiac. I love it. I'm just so, you know, when you come and you look at the but Bobcat. We are looking at the Bobcat. Yeah, should we, behind. Start, should we come around? Maybe we should look at the front. Come around. I it's didn't want to block the traffic. Yeah. So well, we, we, have, we have Brad here from security, you can see yeah. the same. Yeah, we, you, well, yeah we, you, you got that kind of muscle. I don't get that kind of muscle. <laughs> so when you look at it in all the traditions, you know, do you have one specific thing that kind of stands out? Obviously, there's the different signs and just the Bobcat itself. You know, you come down Bobcat Way and it. It's right on. Is there something that you love specifically about it? Well, um, I really, so I talked about two metaphors um, at, of, of the inauguration. One was the speed and nimbleness of the institution. And this bobcat embodies that. I mean, it really is a very, well, a bobcat is often stealth. I haven't seen a bobcat. Have you seen a bobcat? I've never. Ever? I would be so, so scared, oh my god. So, you know, I, I, I haven't. I haven't seen a bear either, have you? I've not, but Quinnipiac has seen bears. I have not Quinnipiac seen any. Quinnipiac has seen bears. I'm told 
that around Spruce Bank there was some sighting of a bobcat, but I, I'm not sure I would know, and they're very fast. So the fastness, nimbleness, the speed and nimbleness of, of the bobcat, I think is just a great metaphor. How I know. do you exercise? I play basketball. Okay, that's good exercise. I play a lot of basketball. Yeah. And what about you? You play tennis, correct? No, 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 no. Oh, oh. So, um, so what I do is cycle. Okay. So I cycle, and I have a peloton at home where I can get on my bike, and you know that's internet connected, right. and you can get classes from. All. So I do that almost every day, oh, and wow, I have an ellipse, you. and I have an ellipse. And then when the weather is nice, I'm a fair weather biker. Okay. But I will bike outside and. And my husband and I, who is the tennis player, um, he and I go biking somewhere for a vacation for like six or seven days. We like doing that, and that's. But you spoke, speak about tennis. So I grew up in Australia, and you know, in Australia, you come out of the womb and they hand you a racket. Yeah. So everyone does play, and I play, um, but I'm not as good anymore. So. I like doing things that I'm reasonably good yeah. But I love watching tennis, so I'm a big fan of tennis, and, and I happen to understand it, unlike some sports yeah. where I'm not an aficionado. Uh, but I'm starting to learn all the great things about our sports here, our 21 sports. I've been to most of our, of our sports and some of the clubs. Over the weekend, I watched our dance uh, club, I've been to acrobatics and tumbling and volleyball and softball and baseball. Obviously, ice hockey and basketball, men and women's sports. I love going to both um, men and women's sports. So it's been fun. Oh, so we get back in the court, but I, card, but I did want to talk to you about that because you are, you know, on Twitter. I've seen you at a couple games and on Twitter I've you're always. I've been tons of yeah. games. And you're always tweeting about, you know, the teams and, and the, right. so, how supportive you are. What does that mean? for the teams to see the president of the university well, so supportive. I hope, that, I hope they're not watching me as they're playing and, <laughs> and, and winning games. But I think it's just to be involved in the life of the campus in every facet. I also go to a lot of faculty talks. Today I'm going to a talk in the medical school where I'm just in the audience. Lifelong learning involves every one of us, including me, and I really feel privileged that I can be at a campus where I can continue to learn about lots of things. Today it's about pricing in the pharmaceutical industry. Of course I'm interested right. in that, but I'm interested in power issues or in some other science issues or in finance. Uh, and, and we should all take advantage of everything that goes on on campus. I love going to theater um, here and, and everywhere. So you mentioned, just really quick back on the athletic thing, you know, you've been around a lot of the teams. Is there a coach or a player maybe that you have a kind of special, unique relationship with? So it's like asking a parent who's your favorite child. <laughs> right. I don't think I would say that, but I, I really am appreciative of our coaches who are teachers first. We all need to recognize that we're a university with student athletes with the emphasis on students who are developing in terms of their own um, lives, in terms of their aspirations and achievements. And sports is layered on top of that and is part of who they are. Juggling, priorities, teamwork, excelling, handling losses, coping. And I think that the role of coaches is to interact with the whole group, not just their sports, and I'm very, very proud of our coaches because they all embody that ideal. I, I agree. I mean, I've just seen it, you know, being at some practices or interviews, they always talk about how proud they are that their students are doing well in class and they're leaders in the communities. I mean, we have students in, in Q30 that are athletes and, you know, do as much as we do, and it's just, it's so great to see that that's what's going on. Well, in fact, our student athletes are excelling academically, uh, and, and that's almost a, a, a given. You have to. But on top of that, they're doing so well in layering all of the commitments and responsibilities of being part of a team, being representatives of our brand as point of yet. So, hi. She says that President Olin. Hi. So, 
you know, I saw when we were filming over there, a couple of people stopped and took pictures, and you know, obviously you were driving down, you're saying hi to everyone. Is that such a good feeling when you drive down totally. and everyone wants to say hi? I'm thrilled with it. And stop me for selfies, talk to me about anything on your mind. That's why I love being part of this campus and being here and walking around as much as possible. Does that ever get old when you're, you know, maybe you're just trying to get somewhere, you're hungry or something, and, you know, 10 people want to stop and talk and take photos? Well, it's not a question of being getting old. It'll never get old. But it's just a question of, okay, what are you juggling to get to? Right. And, and do you have the, the moment in time that you can spare? And if I can't, I say that. Look at that. Should we pick it up? Should we pick it up? Yeah, let's pick it up. Should we pick it up? Yeah, let's pick it up. And we need to develop it, de deliver it somewhere. Who does it go to? Quinnipiac University, Mount Carmel. Office Office of financial, financial aid. Wow, financial we, aid is a big deal. Should, should we drop, we drop it, it off? It off? Where? Well, financial aid is in admissions, which is over there. All right, so, so we'll drop yeah, it off we'll drop over it off there. We'll there. be the mailman. You can put it in here. Thank you. All right, OK. I wonder how it happened. So, someone's going to be very happy. That's how we found that. Well, but, you know, we're not saying prioritize. We're just saying put it in the mix. Gotta right. be fair. Hi. Hi. Good luck on exams. See you. Is there a specific spot on campus that you like to take photos? So I love the expansive view of, of this quad. Um, it, it's beautifully designed. And having the backdrop of Sleeping Giant is just totally special. We have a lot of images of the campus with the library behind us. So I, I just think the campus is beautiful. One of the things when I was being recruited to come here, I, I didn't know what the campus looked like. So I came as, you know, what you call as a stealth shopper. Mm -hmm. I came one weekend on my own. Oh, undercover? <laughs> undercover. Uh, and I actually stopped some students saying that I was a parent, considering sending my, what did they think of it? And I walked around, it was actually a cold weekend, but I, that was really when I became smitten with the campus because it's so beautiful and there was such spirit of engagement and optimism and love of the students of the campus that it really made me um, very, very excited about being here. Okay, we're the mailman. Here's Greg. Here's financial aid. Here we go. Hello, guys. We found this. Good morning, everyone. We found this on the pathway. Somebody dropped it. Is this for you guys? Yes. Nice. Thank you. I know. You're probably getting a lot of those applications yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're happy that we can deliver yes, it. Thank you yeah. So Someone's going to be happy. We don't we know who it is. Is. Right. Thank you so we, much. Of course. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And, and I know you're working long and hard hours now to recruit this great class. Yes. Thank Very you. Yeah. Thanks. I, mean, I, I can't sing. I can't <laughs> sing. Can you sing? Um, in, if I'm listening to myself in the shower, I think <laughs> I can sing. But I don't think anyone else will. But you know, that's another thing. I, I love that. Uh, I love art. But I've never really practiced it. So if you have the opportunity to taste it and then invest in practicing it, I think it changes your life. What's your favorite type of music? So I, I'm a pretty eclectic Person. I don't know if you noticed, but um, on the exit from the inauguration, it was Queen, Don't yep. Stop Me Now. I'm a huge fan of Queen. So Don't Stop Me Now? Well, it, I, I mean, I love melodic performances. I mean, I have a lot of new music, um, and I work out to music. Uh, so I'm, I'm listening to a lot of current music all the time. But part of the way I get exposed is you can pick these Peloton classes based on hip hop or new tracks, oh, wow. grooves or 80s or 90s. And so I often pick <laughs> new tracks and 
That's how I find. We talked about, you know, what kind of music you like. What about, like, what makes you laugh? Like, what, what makes you laugh the hardest? So I was watching Saturday Night Live on, over the weekend, and, and I, I, I don't know if there's a recipe. Congratulations, ladies! Oh my gosh, this is early. This is early. I see nothing, I hear nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, it's people who are able to take you to another place and yet be quite substantive about it. So Adam Sandler was the um, host. Did you see yeah, it? Yeah, I did see it. I did see and it. And I thought the opening was of him, I mean, also laughing at yourself, yeah. self-depreciation, self-deprecation. And um, I also love political commentary, yeah. which, which he did. Um, you remember with the opera song? Yes, I love it. And then he mentioned my New York Knicks in it. Oh, he did. So I, I love that. He did. I mean, I grew up, you know, watching John Stewart all the time. So for me, that was, you know, I, I love because stuff like that. Because that's taking politics and pointing to the irony of it, and yet it can be really pretty funny if you yeah. don't take yourself that seriously. I agree. So we're gonna get out. We just do a little close. Kind of okay. thank, I mean, thank you so much for doing oh, this. This is it's been awesome. A we got to see what the beautiful campus. Do? What are you going to do after this? After graduation, uh, I mean, John said I can have his job, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know after graduation. You know, I'm applying to a lot of jobs, so we'll kind of we'll see what happens with well, it. Well, you're applying at a very good time. Thank you. Yeah, 3.6 unemployment rate. Can't beat that. Perfect. Well, I hope there are you know plenty of jobs in the journalism field. There so kind be. of just to close it, how would you kind of pitch someone on Quinnipiac? Come to the University of the Future that is nimble and pivoting to where the marketplace is going, that it will prepare you for all kinds of professions in life, but it will help you understand yourself and broaden who you are in ways that you won't expect. Well, thank you so much, President Olean. Thank you so much for the time. Thank President you. Olean, thank, thank you. you. I really enjoyed it. And thanks for taking me around to some new places, too, and for organizing this <laughs> cloudless sky. It's been really terrific. And congrats to you. And well, thank, thank you, you for all you did for the four years that you were here. Of Q30, course. the fraternity, and for all the contributions. And you're going to do great. Okay. Thank you. You have the effervescent <laughs> personality. Thank you. So thank you can check you. out all of our content at www.q30tv.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Josh M. Silverman. And you can follow President Olean on Twitter as well as well as the and university Instagram. and Instagram. You are on social media a lot. Is that something you like to do? I like to be connected and to brag about Quinnipiac. Yeah. And there are so many reasons to brag. And there definitely is. So thank thank you everyone for tuning in and check out all of our content on our website.